Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I did a video a while back which was the cons of owning a pet snail so that people would be well informed of if snails were right for you. So now I'm going to be doing a pro list for snails and why I think they make amazing pets. Couple disclaimers because it's a snail video so we have to have some disclaimers. I am in no means an expert. Always consult more than one source anyway. I'm a human, I make mistakes, and we are learning about snails all the time. Disclaimer number two is that this is for garden snails, not giant African land snails. I live in the US and giant African land snails are illegal here. I have no knowledge of them because I will never keep them because they are illegal. And this is also not for aquatic snails. I do not have enough knowledge to talk to you about aquatic snails. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So pro number one is that they have extremely easy care. What I mean by that is that their daily maintenance is at pretty much a minimum other than feeding them and picking up after them and cleaning up their poop as needed. You pretty much also don't ever have to do a deep clean like you do with most uh, exotic animals. So for their deep clean, it would more be like turning the soil and wiping down the enclosure with like water. They also don't need any bonding time like some reptiles would. Uh, you just don't need to have that one-on-one -on -one time with them for them to be tamed down because they're snails and they really don't care. Which brings me to my next point is number two. So unlike most exotic animals, snails have a really simplistic setup. You don't need a ton of room for them, especially like since they're garden snails, they're usually pretty tiny. They don't need a ton of enrichment. They're pretty happy with bare basics. Now I do have a care guy that goes a little more in depth with housing and food and whatnot. So if you're curious about any of that in the video, it is up in one of these corners. So they don't need any special lighting. Um, they're good at room temp usually as long as it's not like super cold in winter time or something, but they don't need like high temperatures. You obviously want to give them places to hide. You want to give them places to climb. You want to give them some things to explore, but it definitely doesn't need to be super enriching and super full. I will say right now though, I wouldn't recommend any hard surfaces so as they can fall and break their shell. Now on to point number three. They have a relatively easy and expansive diet. So once you learn the basics of a snail's diet, which I do have a video on, it's pretty easy to catch on and learn. Like their diet's not as simple as a lot of people think it is, but it's not terribly difficult, you know? They can eat a ton of things and it can be really, really fun to experiment. I go more into their diet in the snail diet video I made not too long ago. So just go check that out if you want to mo know more information about a snail's diet. And point number four is they are really easily accessible. So what I mean by that, I might have to explain a little bit with it because they are and they aren't. Obviously you want to get uh, captive bred specimens more than anything else. However, there aren't a ton of breeders and there aren't a ton of like rescues or rehomes. I actually don't know of any current breeders at this moment. If you do breed garden snails, please let me know so I can start recommending you to people. I really would like to have a list of like every state at some point where there is a snail breeder. That would be really cool to like put together that. So let me know, get in contact. And there also is a snail rescue called, I believe, Starlight Snails Rescue. I will link her down in the description below. It's an amazing organization. I think they're based in Tennessee. I will be having an interview with them shortly. So if you do have any questions for them, let me know in the comments down below as well so I can write those down and make sure I ask for the interview. Now, even though that garden snails aren't readily accessible via adoption or breeding, they are everywhere outside. I'm sure you've noticed. The cool thing about snails is that a lot of snails we have in the US are invasive, so it does not hurt the ecosystem to take them away, and as long as you don't re-release them, of course. As well as snails are considered pests, so most people want them out of their garden anyway and are killing them with pesticides anyway. The easiest way I can recommend to you is either going out whenever it's really rainy or finding a gardener that you know maybe, like locally, that will let you come look at their garden for snails because they will be more than happy to let you take some home. That brings us to our next point is that they have a wonderful temperament. It doesn't take a lot to make a snail happy and on the flip side, it takes a lot to upset a snail. So they are pretty cool with adapting to their environment. So if you do get them from the wild, they will adapt pretty easily in captivity. Uh, they shouldn't usually have a problem with that. And they are normally also cool with being handled. You do have those certain ones that just don't like interaction with people and they'll bubble at you. 
but most snails don't mind the attention and are okay with being handled. Just make sure that you don't have any harsh chemicals on your hands and that they are at least wet, but even then I would recommend holding them on something or wearing gloves since their, their skin is really sensitive and our skin's kind of salty. On to point number six is that snails are very cheap pets. So if you do happen to find a breeder, most of the times the snails are gonna be pretty cheap. Some people are just giving them away for free just for the fact that they don't want a lot of snails. <laughs> Not only are snails themselves really cheap to get, but their uh, enclosures are usually pretty cheap as well. Their food's also pretty cheap. It, they just don't cost a lot of money. You don't need to constantly change their substrate like you do some reptiles and amphibians. And moving right along to number seven is variety. You can get a lot of different types of snails and it makes it a really unique experience. So there are lots of species of garden snails. I know that can be kind of confusing, but garden snails is kind of just like a blanket term at this point and it just means like smaller land snails. But there are a lot of different uh, types of them. For example, there's like the rosy wolf snail, there's uh, Helix aspersums, there's Mesodon thyroideus, there's all kinds of different species and stuff like that that you can get a lot of different combinations. They also come in different colors, which is pretty cool. I mean, generically it's grays and browns, but you can, you can find some really interesting looking snails. Not only their looks, but their personalities can be so different from each other. Uh, most of my snails aren't the same. They have their own quirks. They have their own behaviors. Not to anthropomorphize them a lot, but they do sort of have little personalities. They act differently, you know what I mean? And if you ever find yourself in a situation where you just can't choose between two snails, but you only have one enclosure, that's typically fine. Which brings us to point number eight, cohabbing. You can cohab most snails. Now there are carnivorous snails that will cannibalize like the rosy wolf snail. And you obviously want to avoid those kinds of snails because they will eat other snails. But other than the cannibalistic snails, they do really seem to enjoy company. As long as they have the same environment needs, they should be fine. Not only that, but you can have a pretty decent little cleanup crew in your snail's enclosure, like springtails and some isopods. For isopods, just make sure that you are not getting a isopod species that needs very high protein because they might try to predate on smaller snails. Also, if you are trying to breed, maybe don't have isopods because I they will eat the eggs. Point number nine is that they are extremely renter-friendly pets. They obviously aren't loud pets whatsoever. They don't take up a lot of room. They're not messy. They don't smell bad and they're pretty low key. So they're pretty good pets to have if you're living in an apartment or somewhere that you can't have like dogs or cats or birds or something, um, you might want to look into snails if you're not a fish person. And finally, number 10, which is kind of my favorite and kind of an opinion, they are really entertaining. I think snails are just so cute and they just have their little quirks that just make them really silly. And again, I just never had two snails that act the same and it's really fun to kind of get to know your snail. Again, not trying to anthropomorphize, anthropomorphize them or anything but they're really fun to watch. They are kind of curious little creatures and they're always doing something silly. So they're just really fun to watch. All right guys, well that is all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I figured I put out a positive pro video for snails so that my last video maybe didn't deter you as much. I personally think that cons are more important to know about when you get a, an animal to make sure they fit your lifestyle in the negative aspects as well. But for me, snails cons are completely outweighed by the pros. I think that snails are delightful, but I also still do think that you should check out the con list before you decide to get a snail, just because it's, it's pretty important to know what you're getting yourself into. As always, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. The link will be down in the description below. As well as my art account, I do custom digital pet pictures. So go follow me over there as well. The link is down in the description below. The commissions are open. I also do have a Facebook group. It is Ollie Exotics Thriving Over Surviving if you wanna go check that out. Link is also in the description below. It's just a place where we can share pictures and advice of our pets and all that kind of stuff. Don't forget to leave this video a like for the algorithm and comment down below 
what your favorite thing about snails is because they're just so underrated to me. And subscribe if you are into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I will see you guys next week. Bye.